What's up guys, JSU Sense here. We're gonna be taking a look at a new laptop. Now before you start saying blah, 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 it's just another laptop, who cares? It's an overpriced piece of junk. Uh, I get it, I get it, I, I hear you guys. I've got massive desktops myself. And I've said it before, these exist for a reason. Laptops are a part of our world and they're not going anywhere. Laptops are getting better than ever because of the efficiency and the power of the components we have today. That was proven with the GT73 VR Titan we looked at a couple months ago with a GTX 1080 in there and a quad core i7 with hyper threading and what was it, 64 gigs of RAM, something ridiculous like that, I don't even remember. But this is a little bit more reasonable. Now I've had this for the last couple of months and Nick has been using it for the last several weeks as his primary uh, laptop. You've been carrying it around just well, you already graduated, but you were taking it like to my house, to here, you're playing games on it, editing pictures. You done some photo editing on this? Edits, yeah. A couple edits, okay. Well, anyway, this guy right here is still a 17.3 inch laptop, but look at the form factor of this. Look at the footprint. It is extremely thin, coming in at just about an inch at its thickest point, but it only weighs 5.9 pounds. Now, I know that still sounds kind of heavy when you compare it to things like a MacBook Air and whatnot, but when you look at what this can do and what's in there, and it maintains a 17.3 inch panel at that weight, that's actually pretty amazing. And it is a full metal construction. It's a metal body, uh, brushed aluminum to be exact. Unfortunately, it's a fingerprint magnet. So like, as I do that, you know, it's, the fingerprints get pretty bad. But anyway, that's minor. Just keep a microfiber nearby, I guess. Now I'm gonna run through the specs quickly. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on the specs. I want to spend time with gaming on this and doing some stuff to kind of show really what it's like using this thing. Now, this version right here is actually a seventh gen Intel uh, Core i7. So it's a 7700 HK. You'll see 6700 HK is advertised, but it, this is a 7700 HK. It's got 16 gigabytes, two eight, eight dim sticks, uh, DDR4 2400. It's got a GTX 1060, six gigabyte. The panel, as I mentioned, is a 17.3 inch 1080p, 120 Hertz, five millisecond, 94% uh, NTSC panel. So although the color gamut is not quite as accurate or as wide as we would like, it still is perfect for middle ground of content creators, productivity, and gaming. Hard drive wise, it's got a 256 gigabyte SSD. You can order them, I believe, with a 512 and it has a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. Would have liked to have seen a 7200 RPM in there. That's more or less for like mass storage. 256 gigabyte SSD will fill up very quickly, especially with how big games are today. What's Ghost Recon, like 79 gigabytes? Sounds about right. Yeah, it's like 79 gigs. So when you open it up and you look inside right here, uh, you can see we still have brushed aluminum finish on the inside surrounding the keyboard. We've got our trackpad here, which is lined up with the space bar, which is kind of nice. Sometimes when they're in the middle, it's kind of weird because that's not like where your hand is. If you come straight down and you can use the trackpad, that's kind of nice. The keyboard is actually a steel series keyboard. It's a membrane keyboard, individual LED backlighting, so you can customize the lighting profile to whatever you want it to be. But the throw on there is really nice too. It's about a three millimeter throw, which gives it a very mechanical type of feel because it's very positive when you push it. You got a real good feedback from the key. It's not mushy and sloppy like a lot of keyboards are. So it's actually a decent typing experience. I personally hate typing on laptops but I actually don't have a problem typing on this. It's not that bad at all. Obviously there's no optical drive. I think a lot of laptop companies have done away with optical drives. I haven't seen a laptop with an optical in a while, at least not ones that I've got my hands on. Now let's do this. Let's fire it up and let's play some games. Now, I mean, I know like when it comes to traveling, professional editing and all that stuff, it can do it, obviously, but we care about the games, right? Let's do it. Are you coming? Transition. So this is the MSI Dragon Center, and this is like a dashboard where you can control all the different things happening with your laptop. Uh, and it comes pre-bundled, and, and most of the time I'm not cool with dashboard apps like this, but this one's actually pretty good. You've got a system monitor, you can see what's happening in temperatures, you can see what's happening with your fan speeds, how much memory you're using. The LED wizard allows you to change your LED backlighting on your keyboard, as we mentioned. System tuner, this one does not actually have unlocked overclocking for things like your CPU and your GPU. However, uh, on, ones, on, on laptops that do support it, this is where you would do it, but you could change your fan profile here, your shift mode, that's basically like your CPU power profile. Now the MSI True Color is where you can control the color profile for your panel for different scenarios. Now remember, this is not 
an IPS panel, so the colors are not going to be as accurate. So 94% color accuracy on this. But if you see designer mode, it turns the brightness way down. Holy crap, let's see if we can turn that back up. So you got designer mode, you've got your sRGB mode, so that's your, like your, your color gamut. Anti-blue mode, it keeps turning the brightness all the way down, that's crazy. Gamer mode, did you do this? Did you make it so this would? No, it's always been like that. Weird. Anyway, um, office mode, movie mode, but yeah, there's that. So we'll put it in gamer mode, because, you know, I'm a wannabe gamer. Looks like it takes a lot of the, co the contrast out, though, and it looks very flat. So this is the Heaven benchmark. You can see we're getting, uh, wow, 123-ish FPS right there. It's boosted up to 1911 megahertz. Temperature's currently at 65. We'll let this run for a minute and see what the temps kind of equalize at. 61 FPS there. So yeah, this is 1080p right now with ultra settings, tessellation on normal, and 4x MSAA. Four times MSAA, that's a lot to ask out of a GTX 1060. But yeah, it looks like our temperatures are hovering just under 70. So here's what we'll do. We'll let this run for a minute, and uh, we'll let go and knock another loop or two, and then we'll see what the temps are. So it seems like we've kind of equalized right around 75C. Now that's not bad at all for a laptop, obviously, especially with this thin, thin form factor. But here's what it sounds like. It's a little bit on the noisier side, but I mean, you do have to give up something obviously when you do laptop gaming. I've got a shotgun mic literally out of frame right here. See, I'm gonna touch it. There we go. Um, I'm gonna turn your speakers up a little bit right here. I want you guys to kind of hear the pitch of the fans in this so you can kind of get an idea of what they sound like. So we'll do that now. All right, we're gonna do some Ghost Recon here. It's a game that is definitely not as optimized as it could be, but it's still a very good benchmark of how strong your hardware is. So here we are in Ghost Recons. You can see we're sitting about 63 FPS. Our current settings are set to high. So that's our high preset. I don't think that's unreasonable for a game like this. I, I feel like asking a laptop to play Ghost Recon on high settings is actually a, a lot to ask of, of any laptop. I like to make wheelies. We, oh God, ah, okay. Oh crap, he wants to fight. Nope, he doesn't want to fight. Shit. I'm sitting at 58 right now with all this vegetation, no complaints here. Boom. Yeah, look at that. That was very tactical. This game is so pretty. I've heard some people say they don't think this game looks very good. I think they're on crack. <laughs> I'm out of here. Woo! Pull the shoot. Oh, got the tree. Whoa. The spiral of death. It's a death spiral. Well, I think Ghost Recon is definitely no problem for this. No problem. So earlier I called this a 7700 HK. My bad, it's actually a 7700 HQ. Um, we got a 725 score on the first run. I'm just doing this one more time for redundancy to see uh, if we get some pretty consistent scores in this, looking for like thermal throttling or anything like that. But so far the temperatures have been kept really cool. Uh, the CPU sticks right around 65C and the graphics card never got any hotter than 76C when gaming. So that's definitely not bad for a, a thin laptop like this. And our second run was 706, so it slowed down a little bit, but hey, still not bad for a laptop. We'll save our score there. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this and uh, see what my final thoughts are. I'm gonna say this, first of all. You've gotta give them credit for the amount of hardware they've been able to put into this machine and the form factor and footprint they were able to maintain. I mean, yeah, it's a 17.3 inch monitor, uh, laptop, but it doesn't really feel like it because a lot of the 17.3 inch screens on the, on the market uh, when you close the lid, they kind of extend out, like they go farther. But this one's done a really good job at having the hinge be the extremity of the footprint. So it's actually not that bad. Uh, something else though that I really like about this laptop is I think the GTX 1060 was a perfect sweet spot in terms of discrete GPU to give you good gaming performance, but while keeping costs down. Yeah, I mean, obviously we'd all love to have 1070s and 1080s in our laptops, but then obviously heat becomes an issue and uh, price obviously is gonna go up quite a bit because as I mentioned, 
This, as it sits right now, is about $1,549. Now, you can spec it up, obviously, with bigger SSDs. In fact, if you want to, you can even swap in your own SSD. Don't know what that would do to your warranty, but it, most of you guys watching are very clever DIYers, and you could do that with no problems whatsoever. Um, but it's not perfect. And there's a couple things I want to mention. One, the brushed aluminum looks nice, but man, is it a fingerprint magnet. That's why there's always a, a rag nearby for the laptop, I swear. Uh, it, you're just constantly having to wipe off fingerprints. And it doesn't matter, like I've washed my hands, like to where I was almost rubbing the skin off to see if I could get enough skin oils off of my hands to keep there from being any fingerprint or oil transfer, not happening. No matter what, you look at this laptop, you think about touching this laptop and fingerprints are going to appear. The other thing is obviously it's noisy. What, what I mean by that is the fans have to spin very fast because they're very thin fans. And so they have to spin fast to get enough airflow to keep it cool. Now the temps are good and you can obviously slow the fans down by controlling the fan curve inside the software I showed you, but the trade-off is gonna be potentially more th uh, temperature thermal throttling of the GPU and the CPU as the temps go up. So it's a trade-off, just like desktops too though, noise to performance. My other complaint is the audio is not very good. And instead of having the speakers built into like the bottom bezel here of the monitor where they could fire at you, or even at the top of the keyboard or on the side of the keyboard like a lot of brands do, they are actually down fire speakers on the bottom of the front right there. So if you're putting this on your lap, chances are you're gonna kind of cork off the sound and it's gonna sound extremely muffled. And the sound you do get when you have it on a flat surface is bouncing off of a table, which gives it a, just not a very good sound. So I'm assuming that's a trade off with the form factor. I don't know how easily they could have made them fire up out of the keyboard tray, but nonetheless, that is a complaint of mine. But other than that, it, I don't have many other things to say about this that are, that are negative. I know a lot of you guys hate laptops and you just hate the idea of a laptop and you just feel like everyone should take their desktop with them everywhere they go and pack it up and wind up the cables and throw it in your trunk and take it to, to anywhere you're gonna go. But the bottom line is these exist for a reason. And I think this is doing a very good job at what it's meant to do. Give you a laptop that can kind of do it all. Productivity, gaming, and obviously portability, which is some things you sacrificed uh, with the the VR Titan. Anyway, guys, you tell me what you think about this guy right here while I wipe off the fingerprints, which is just destined and doomed to have for the rest of its life. I think $1,500, well, although not cheap, but still isn't ridiculously expensive, you're getting a very well-rounded laptop experience for both the traveling professional and gamer. So sound off in the comments, tell me what you guys think, and as always, I will see you in the next one.